from Gran Canaria. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show from Johannesburg, South Africa. Welcome to the GCN Show. Welcome to the GCN Show. This week we pick over an action-packed and slightly controversial Milan San Remo. How was the race really won? Plus we have got some wicked new tech, including something to shake the very foundations of hardcore cycling fans. Plus all our regular features as well. In the light of the recent terrible events in Belgium, everybody here at GCN would just like to take this opportunity to pass on our thoughts and wishes to everybody affected. Right then, cycling traditionalists, hold on to your hats, because this is going to rock your world. Hold on to my hat, mate. All right. Campagnolo have just shown, wait for it, a disc brake. <gasps> I know. Yeah, crazy, isn't it? Couldn't hold on to my hat. Apparently, they're quite close to a finished prototype, and all of their World Tour teams are currently involved in the final testing phase. So that is going to be seriously interesting when that lands, isn't it? It certainly is. But staying with high-tech, Zwift have launched a new expansion which is going to be pretty good for those of you who like climbing. Now, the new Watopia Mountain expansion features two new climbs. There's a 9.5 kilometer climb, which averages 3.9%, and a 6K climb, a little bit steeper, at 5.9%. You've got some lovely snowy mountain views, and you can bolt them all together for a 65K loop featuring 1,300 meters of climbing, and it does look absolutely gorgeous. That sounds tough. Mm. Uh, staying indoors though, for just a few more moments, online training app Kinomap Trainer have just launched their own Etap du Tour training plan, whereby you get a new video each week to train along to, and the video will be shot on the actual course itself. So if video is your thing as opposed to gameplay, then that's definitely worth checking out. Right, and finally, for Tech of the Week, when I was out in Taipei, I met a guy who had a new product that was about to launch on Kickstarter. Check it out. This is the Hexlock and it's launching on Kickstarter. And basically it's a way of making your bike components theft proof because this little Allen key shaped, I don't know what you want to call it, basically blocks any Allen key bolt. So it could be uh, your seat post or it could be your handlebars. And it's simply released using this key by pressing in and turning it out. So the key itself is almost unique. You push it in, turn it half a turn and away it comes. Unbelievable weighs just 1.8 grams, so you could even stick it on your posh road bike. And they come in four, five, and six millimeter Allen key bolts. Milan San Remo is the first monument of the year, and it's really a race for the cycling connoisseur. And that's because everybody anticipates and waits for some action to happen, which invariably it does, albeit in the final 25 k's of a 295 kilometer race. Now this year it was French sprinter Arnaud Demar of FDJ who took victory in Milan San Remo and the fact is he was a bit of a dark horse going into the race. So the question is, how did he do it? How did Demar win Milan San Remo? The first monument for France, remember, in 19 years. Yeah, well firstly, you've got to hide, haven't you? So you don't do anything for the first 250 kilometres other than sit in the bunch and be looked after by your teammates. So we can move swiftly over the first six hours of racing and get to point number two, which is that you have to stay upright. Mm. Except the demand didn't, did he? No, that's true. He was caught up by a crash, which also involved the likes of Geraint Thomas and pre-race favourite for the race, Michael Matthews. And therefore, he had to do a big chase after losing quite some time to the bunch which was still going full throttle on some very tough coastal roads. But he did eventually catch back up, so the debate has been how exactly did he do it and did he hold on to a team car? Yeah, so let's look at what we know. Two fellow riders accused him of taking a toe up the Chipressa and Damar's Strava file does show that he was the fastest rider on the Chipressa, which is no mean feat for a sprinter. But also, there is photographic evidence of Damar sat on Michael Matthews' wheel, being towed by another Orica Green Edge teammate, not a team car. Yeah, well, that's right. So Simon Yates was one of the Orica Green Edge guys, giving him a pace up there. And he stuck up for Damar on Twitter after it was in this social media storm, saying that he posted a speed of 54.5 k an hour up the Chipressa whilst he was in the convoy doing legitimate things, as opposed to illegitimate things. Fair play to Demar, he did actually upload his Strava file from the race itself, but rather frustratingly, it didn't include any of the power data, which was all that was needed from his part to prove that he did indeed have to pedal very hard to make his way back up to the group. 
Mm, fair point, but what else do you need to win? Well, a stroke of luck wouldn't go amiss, and he's certainly got a little bit of that. Just take a look at this picture here. The rider in the centre of your picture, that's Fernando Gaviria, arguably one of the fastest sprinters in that group left at the end. There's Arnav Demar, just in the middle, just managing to move around the crash on the right-hand side. But look at the angle of having Cancellara there, and Peter Sagan as well nearly went into the barriers. They did an amazing job just to stay upright. They did, although as Kayleigh Fretz pointed out, because that is his tweet there, kudos the Trek mechanics for gluing the tubs on so well, because they pretty much saved Cancellara's classic season right there, haven't they? Look at that angle he's at. Yeah, he certainly did. Uh, meanwhile, runner-up on the day was Team Sky's Ben Swift. And as you can see, he also had to take some quite invasive action. Quite a long way back, so it's almost a miracle that he did manage to make up all those metres and finish second. Yeah, fair play to him. Indeed. So, there you have it. Whatever assistance DeMar got, or didn't get, he still did an amazing job to put himself back into contention in Milan San Remo, and then was the fastest man still standing at the end. It's competition time and we have a winner for one of the most illustrious prizes a cycling fanatic could ever wish to win. So, the person who will be riding the final 100 kilometres of this year's Tour of Flanders with some cycling legends including previous winners of the race in between the men's and the women's races on the day of the event in front of thousands of cycling fans is... Ooh, Mike Winkup of Tampa in Florida! Well done, Mike. Just well done. I'm a little bit emotional, welling up a little bit. First and foremost, we'll see you there, but please do get in touch so we can get everything sorted out. And of course, give us the details of the person, that lucky person you're going to be taking with you. And make sure you pack some bib tights and some gloves as well, because I should imagine Flans is going to be a little bit cooler than definitely, Florida. Definitely, definitely wet wet. And if you need to see how to uh, pack your bib tights, there's a useful bit of info <laughs> in our 11 Cycling Hacks video. It's time now for Hack forward slash bodge of the week. Now the one that we're going to start with is definitely at least a hack, if not something even superior worth the which. It's a new product in the making. It uh, is. It was sent into us brilliant. on Facebook by Joshy. Joshy Five Wise. Joshy and Five it's an Wise. ingenious way that he's designed of getting tires onto bike wheels. It's so ingenious actually, you almost can't believe it exists. I kind of want him to make one. Next up is this from Dave Lambert, and this is it's very, very, very strange, but also quite practical. It, it's a top tube, a seat, and a mudguard all in one. Found it on the internet. What do you reckon? Do you think you could ride that, Matt? Or do you think that's a bit close to your fear of logs? Maybe like it would counteract therapy. any logs that I subsequently run over riding on that bike. They're obviously quite precious about it because they've locked it up. Mm. Mm. It's definitely a bodge anyway. You could always nick the log, actually. You just have to slice the gaffer tape, I would have mm. thought. Anyway, clearly someone who has watched the uh, Hacks video recently, Tim Litchfield, has uh, given himself plenty of room to buy some new Lycra because he's rolled all his shorts up. Nice. Well, that, good to have to admit, that does look far neater now than it did before. It does. Uh, meanwhile, Joe Rummy wrote in with this uh, picture of an SIS sponsor saying, heading out for a weekend cycling tour and forgot to pack your wash kit. No worries. He's put it all inside the bead on. That's good quite job. Cool. He's clearly watched our hack on Facebook as well. Well done, Joe. And this from the cycling snob. This looks like a terrible idea, but I still think it qualifies for a GCN hack. <laughs> I think it looks amazing. Perfect it's, for uh, Zwift, isn't it? Yeah, it looks like a generic games controller, sellotaped or gaffer taped to handlebars that don't exist. I don't know how safe it would be, but... Um, aero. Mm, it's definitely That's pretty aero, isn't it? Right, don't forget to send us your pictures of your own homemade bodges and hacks using the hashtag GCNHack on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. Lizzie Armistead took her second consecutive victory in the Trofeo Alfredo Binder. She outsprinted her breakaway companion Yolanda Neff, but cruelly Neff tied up inside the line and was herself overhauled by Megan Garnier, with Neff having to settle for third place in the end. Yeah, Bulls Dormans have now won all three of the rounds of the inaugural Women's World Tour, with Armistead herself taking two of those. She knows, now goes back into the leader's jersey in that competition and is looking formidable, really, at this point in the season. The question is, though, can she and they continue the momentum? 100% hit rate is pretty awesome, isn't it? But uh, Meanwhile, in Belgium, it's been a busy week of racing. On Wednesday, there was a knocker, of course, and that was won by uh, Timothy Dupont of a uh, continental team, Verandas Williams, in a big bunch sprint. Then on Friday, it was the hands and Classic, and Neopro Eric Basker from Slovakia and Tinkoff took that in yet another bunch sprint. But the other significant story from the hands and Classic was the return of Lotto Sudal's Chris Bookman after his near life-threatening crash at last year's Walter. And he managed to finish a very creditable 145th after leading the bunch in the closing stages. Good to have you back, Chris. Over in Spain, 
possibly the race of the year so far wow. for Grand Tour contenders. Five big hitters are going to be contesting the Tour of Catalonia. Uh, so who is it? Contador, Chris Froome, Van Garderen, Quintana and Aru are all going head to head. That's going to be good. It's going to be yeah. cool. Time now for Caption of the Week. Take yep. it away, Lloydy. First up, last week's winner, which was underneath the photo of Trusoff, looking slightly muddied after a crash in Strada Bianca. Uh, winner is Jay Puppykick, who said, Caption, I could do an 82R kit right about now. Well done, get in touch, and we shall send you out some GCN swag. He only just beat your remote caption that you sent him, by the way, last week. Only just, because that was a really, really strong one. Now, this week's caption photo is Marco Haller on the ground during Milan San Remo. He did get back up and finished. Matt, do you want to go for it? Ooh, a penny. That's a strong contender, that one. If you want to enter, make sure you stick your caption in the comment section down below. They're not going to be that Where one. That's absolute that? genius, mate, that I've one. I've never not heard gonna, that. Not no. I, what, if I win, can I get a bead on? Yeah. I'll probably just turn around and nick one. Have one trade price. <laughs> Cheers. It's now time for cycling shorts. First up, apparently, Mountain bikers have better postures than road riders. What? Yeah, really? no, personally, I don't believe that. But in the International Journal of Sports Medicine, they have a report that says that road riders are more likely to hunch over. But we do get longer hamstrings. Ah, oh, there you go. So there you go. That's all right. That is true. Uh, now, some slightly disappointing news, certainly from my perspective, which came out last week, <laughs> is that Alejandro Valverde of Movistar will not be competing at this year's Tour of oh, Flanders, oh. or indeed the race to build up to it. Now, he was due to make his debut at the race this year uh, at age 35, but has instead chosen to go on a high altitude training camp in preparation for the Giro d'Italia. Well, talking of Grand Tours, can a Grand Tour be only two? weeks long. Well that soon could become a reality because USAR President Brian Cookson was speaking to Gazetta della Sports and was quoted as saying this, I personally believe that the Tour and the Giro should remain at three weeks but it wouldn't surprise me to see a two week Vuelta and this of course is part of the ongoing reform of pro cycling. But very very quickly, what do you think guys? I think that's really harsh to the Tour of Spain. Can't be a grand tour at three weeks. And it's been and one of the weeks. best grand tours of the year, especially at the back end of the last few years. It's been absolutely scintillating and really, really exciting. Yeah, yeah. short stages, slightly smaller teams are the way to go, but I think they should all remain three weeks. Same here. They should. Now, finally, for cycling shorts, did you see that the world cyclocross champion, Wout van Aert, was spotted training with the Etix Quickstep team just before Milan San Remo? Now, is this going to precipitate a move to the road? Or was he just riding with a load of his Belgian mates yeah. somewhere nice it's, and hot? It's a lovely place for a cafe run, though, isn't it? It is, isn't it? But still. We can talk about this one for ages. Mm. It's time for GCN's weekly Wattage Bazooka. There you go. Thanks very much. Bit anti climax that. Isn't it, it? Was, it was the pace just <laughs> dropped right off, didn't it? After his attack, where he ripped over the Poggio and then descended like a rocket down the other side, only to be caught by counter wattage bazooka from none other than Fabian Cancellara. This week's WB goes to Michal Kwiatkowski of Team Sky. Check out this data. That's some pretty big data, That's isn't it? Big That's data. big data. That's a pretty big power, well deserved. Now, the we winner are. this week of the non-pro wattage bazooka goes to <laughs> Thomas Iver. Now, he did his first ever under eight cyclocross race last week and won it. Whoa. So you've got a 100% record, just like Bulls Dormans. So well done, Thomas. Definitely worth a WB there. Now, don't forget that if you want to nominate yourself or somebody else for the What is Bazooka next week, we will be keeping our eyes on most forms of social media and the hashtag What is Bazooka, as you can see here. I was 13th in my first ever bike race. I was 47th. Oh, really? Yeah. It must have been a bigger bike race than mine. I'm sure yeah, 47 I was, people. I was lapped. Yeah, it must have been 48 started. So you're better than all of us, Thomas. Never got a WB in those days. Time now for Dom's Tweet of the Week. He's chosen two this week. And first up we have this from at Oz Dan Jones. It's quite a good one, pretty brutal this one. Sometimes cycling can be a cruel sport, symbolised by Bling Matthews handlebars after Milan San Remo. That ouch. looks horrible. That's a big it? ouch, isn't it? That looks horrible. Well, another former ouch, but now good news. Mm. This is from Fabio de Dapper, who said, ready for his first race at Chris Bookman's Lotto Sudal, never give up. And that was great to see him pin that number on, wasn't it? And race this week. Was. Brilliant. It's time now for comment of the week. And as ever, there's been some absolute crackers. First up, we've got Swedish House FIFA, who says, I'm surprised Matt stayed up. 
That is basically small logs made of stone. No, he's not, f not far wrong, actually. But you, you aced the Koppenberg, didn't you? <laughs> Almost. We also had a great comment underneath our 11 useful cycling hatch from John the Doors. Predictably, Dan folds under pressure. Boom, boom. Very good. Very good indeed. Oh, so that's predictable, is it? Well, this was under our Taipei Tech Extra, featuring size trip abroad to that rather cool show. Lots of cool tech there. And this is from Alex R. Read to Peak Storage. I've still got an emergency $20 stuck in my handlebars that I can't get out. Of course, to peek at that was the bar end chain link remover stuck in as well. But I have lost a fiver before in my uh, handlebars back in about 1989. That was worth quite a lot of money in 1989. It's doubled the price of the bike now, actually. <laughs> On the channel this week, on Wednesday, it's how to ride in crosswinds. Because of this, it's important to be considerate when you're riding in a group. Now, if you're riding in the UK, where you ride on the left-hand side, and the wind is coming from the right, it's courteous to leave a little bit of space on the inside so the rider behind can get some nice shelter. On Thursday, it's our top 10 cycling world records. The actual answer is 25.72 kilometers, which is 15.98 miles in a single hour set by Manuel Scheidegger. Now that's pretty impressive. I think I struggle to do that distance myself here now on two wheels these days. To be fair, Dan, you probably would. All right. Yeah, on Friday, Matt and I have quite a heated debate about who is the better rider, Fabian Cancellara or Tom Bonin? It's Tom Bonin. It's Fabian Cancellara. And Saturday's pro bike is Alex Dowsett's Canyon Air Road CF SLX. Sunday Fast. is Ask GCN, which actually is mainly going to be Ask Matt. It certainly is, yeah. But Ask Matt. And then on Monday, we have got another maintenance video for you. It's Fabian Cancellara. And on Tuesday, it's the GCN show. Tornado Tom. Now, if you want to see some more GCN videos, I imagine you might want to after that, then why not click just up there and you get straight through the GCN quiz, which is definitely worth entering. Or for our top 11, 11 cycling hacks, click just down here. And to subscribe to GCN, click on the floating logo.